Hi everyone, welcome to Hop into Precalculus. I'm a ninth grader who took AP Precalc this year and wanted to share what I learned in a fun and helpful way. I'm not a teacher, but I love math and I explain it the way I wish it had been explained to me. Each video breaks down things step by step, and I'll even include some bunny pictures at the end as your reward. Today, we're hopping into a super important topic, rate of change, and I'll make it simple and fun. By the end of this video, you'll understand what rate of change means, how to find it in functions, and what it looks like on a graph. The topics I'll be talking about in this video are 1.1, changes in tandem, 1.2, rate of change, and 1.3, rate of change in linear and quadratic functions. These are the first three parts of Unit 1 in AP Precalculus, which is about polynomial and rational functions. First, one of the ways to describe a function is increasing and decreasing. This first graph shows an increasing function because a is less than b and f of a is less than f of b. a equals 1 and b is 2 and f of a is 1 and f of b is 2. Therefore, that function is increasing. The function on the right is decreasing because a is less than b and f of a is greater than b, f of b. So here, a is 1 and b is 2 and f of a is 3 and f of b is 2. So that means this function is decreasing. There is an easier way that I like to think about it as. Just trace the function from left to right. And then if it goes up, then it's increasing. And if it goes down, then it's decreasing. I'm sure most of you already know slope and how to find it. So this is just a review. First, we can plot these points. There are two ways I'll show you how to find slope. First, get two points. Then label them x1, y1, x2, and y2. Then we use the formula here and plug in y2 minus y1 and then over x2 minus x1 and that equals 1 over 1 which is 1. Another way is using the graph which is rise over run. The rise is 1 and the run is also 1. So you do 1 over 1 and then you get the slope of 1. Now, after reviewing slope or rate of change, we can talk about another way to describe a function, which is concavity. Concave up means the rate of change is increasing, and concave down means it's decreasing. Here, we can see the slope is around negative 4, and it's less negative here, where it's around negative 2. Negative 2 is greater than negative 4, so this graph is concave up. On the right half of this graph, the rate of change at 1 is around 2, and here the rate of change is around 4. For the graph on the right, the slope here is around 4, and then the slope up there is around 2, so the rate of change is decreasing. On the other half, it's around negative 2 here, and then a negative 4 down there. So it's decreasing again. That makes this function concave down. This may seem a little confusing at first, but you can just look at the shape. If it's a positive a quadratic or like an up quadratic, then it's shaped like a u for up. And if it's a negative quadratic with a negative a coefficient, then it points down and it's concave down. You won't know how to find the rate of change at an exact point, so using a secant line is good for estimation. Just find the slope of two points you know, and as the two points get closer, the estimation becomes better. Here you can do 
y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you plug in 4 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. And then you get 3 over 1, which equals 3. This is very close to the slope at 1.5, which can be found using calculus. You can also use a secant line to estimate values. So you have two points, 1 comma 1 and 1.5 comma y2. Label them x1, y1, and x2, y2. And then plug it into the slope formula. y2 minus 1 over 1.5 minus 1 equals y2 minus 1 over 0 0.5 equals 3 and then you can multiply 0 0.5 on both sides and then you get y2 minus 1 equals 1 1.5 and then add 1 to get y2 equals 2.5 the actual value is 2.25 which is really close to what we got Linear versus quadratic. You can tell what a function is based on the rate of change. Linear functions have a constant rate of change, and quadratics don't. For example, add 1 to every successive y value. This doesn't work for the quadratic, where all the differences are different. You see plus 3, plus 5 and plus 7. However, the second differences are the same, meaning the difference between the first differences, plus 2 and plus 2. Time for the practice problem. So the function f of x equals 15 times 1.07 to the x shows the population of a group of rabbits over time. The x-axis represents time in days and the y-axis represents the number of rabbits. So we need to answer the questions. Identify if the graph is increasing or decreasing and what does it mean in context. So let's trace the graph. So that's obviously going up, so it's an increased function. The graph is increasing in context. This means the rabbit population is getting bigger. Okay, next question. Concave up or concave down? So we can draw the shape of a concave up graph, shaped like a U, and concave down, which is like an upside down U. And this function we are given definitely looks like the half of the concave up function. We can also draw in the other half of the parabola to confirm that it is indeed concave up. So the graph is concave up. And that means this means the rate. at which the rabbits increase is increasing. Okay, next. It says, find the average rate of change of the population of rabbits from x equals 30 to x equals 40 days using the points 30 comma 114 and 40 comma 225. So this means we need to use the slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1.
we can label the points x1, y1, x2, and y2 and plug it into the formula 225 minus 114 over 40 minus 30 which equals 111 divided by 10 which equals 11.1 Next, we need to use the average rate of change we found in question 3 to estimate the population of rabbits on day x equals 35. So we need to choose two points. We can do 30, 114, and 35, y2. And then label the points. And then use the slope formula. y2 minus 114 over 35 minus 30 equals 11.1 .1. and then y2 minus 114 divided by 5 equals 11.1 .1. then multiply 5 on both sides y2 minus 114 equals 55.5 and then finally y2 equals 169.5 Thanks so much for hopping by. If this video helped you understand the topic better, please give it a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Comment below if you have any questions, suggestions for future topics, or just want to say hi. I read every comment and I'd love to hear from you. And if you made it all the way to the end, comment a bunny so I know you're part of the bunny squad. See you in the next video and keep hopping forward in math. As promised, here's your buddy reward.